Roll sound. Roll. Sound production, take two. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be exploring GitHub hosted runners, private networking using Azure VNet injection. There's really two ways to do this. I've done a previous demonstration using the Azure firewall. I'll link that above. And this way is using the network security groups. All right, let me describe what we're going to be working in today. I currently have a VPN connected between Azure and my on-prem data center. This could be any data center or cloud provider, it doesn't matter. But I have a VPN already established there with a resource group, VNet, and NSG that applies rules to that VNet. And then of course, a gateway in that VNet routing traffic through the VPN to the data center. On the GitHub side, when we provision it, it will also create a resource group, VNet, and NSG with specific rules for accessing the GitHub resources required for that runner. We'll then build a peering relationship between the VNet that's created on the GitHub side, as well as our production VNet, so that traffic from the runner will be able to peer and route to the gateway on the production side and then to the VPN and my data center. In order for that to happen, we will delegate control to GitHub so that it can configure just the NIC into that VNet. All right, so we're delegating control so that they can provision network interface cards into a VNet subnet that we allocate. And then those NSG rules will be applied to that. And we'll test all that out. You'll get to see that work. Okay, so let's first take a look at our Azure side. On Azure, we have a VPN connection already established, and I built this little VM just for testing. Let's take a look at the NSG rules currently in place. Here I've added a few rules. This bottom one here is to deny all traffic. Now I have two additional rules for outbound that says that I can use port 80 HTTP and we're going to do a curl test in a moment. And then this other one that allows uh, ICMP or pings to my network. And you can see a constant ping going on over here. This really, while I'm doing the demonstration and testing things, just make sure that the VPN is active. However, I've got this, uh, v this constant ping going. Let's go ahead and stop that. And we'll do our curl. I have a simple little Nginx web server that's responding, welcome to Red Cloud, which is my lab environment. Okay, let's go back to the ping. And you can see this is a private network, right? 172.16.1.9, which falls within the subnet range. And now just to prove that all this traffic is being filtered through this NSG, let's just drop this ICMP, which means that it would go to the deny all rule. It will take a few moments for these rules to be updated on the back end of Azure. And at that point, we should see the ICMP stop. Okay, it finally stopped. You can see that it's not running anymore after a sequence 69. So it took a few moments to get that to refresh. All right, we'll go ahead and close this and I'll exit from this test machine and back into my working directory here. Okay, so I'm gonna actually remove this deny all rule, or actually I'm not going to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a VNet to VNet rule right above it at uh, let's say 500, and that will allow our two virtual networks then to, uh, to communicate as well. Okay, so let me just add that rule real quick. Outbound from here, we'll say add. Actually, no, I need to do virtual network and then the service tag, virtual network, do all traffic, allow, allow, and we need to put it above that. So 510, add. And again, what I want here is the two virtual networks to communicate. That way when I do peering, I won't have any issues with traffic routing through and out this interface. Okay, now let's take a look at the GitHub side. For GitHub, we're not gonna be able to use the two core free runners. You have to use the larger runners, the four to 64 CPUs. It's also supported in three regions today, East US, East US 2 and West US 2. So keep that in mind. And then uh, we've got a couple of things down here we need to copy over. The first one is his bicep script. This applies those NSG rules 
to our NSG that's going to be configured as part of the build script. All right, let's just quickly review these. I think it's important to note that the very first rule that's being applied here is this internet deny, right? So we're denying all traffic from the GitHub hosted runners to the internet. The next thing is we're allowing 443, port 443 to the virtual network. And then we're allowing 443 to Azure Cloud and allowing port 443 to these four CIDR ranges. Now, if you've used NSGs before, or if you've looked at it previously, there were a long list of CIDR blocks that were introduced. They have super simplified it now. You just have these four ranges and they're really not that large, uh, but we have four IP ranges that, um, that you'll have to allocate. So much, much better than it was before. All right, so happy to see that. So copy this file over, just grab the copy and I've already dumped it over here. So you'll have it locally to run the script. The next thing is we need to grab our database ID and you'll want to get your slug name. You can run this to get your slug name or you can just jump over to your cloud instance. And if you go to the enterprise settings overview and you just click this URL here, you'll see github.com enterprises vault tech emu. Vault Tech Emu is my cloud instance. This is my URL slug. Yours will be different. So github.com slash enterprises, whatever your slug name is, that's what you'll use. All right, so you'll plug that in right here, run the script. Oh, you'll also need a admin bearer token so that you can it just read access uh, with that slug and it'll pull your database ID. You'll require that as part of the bash script. And this is the bash script. Again, copy the bash script here because you're going to have to make some updates to it and dump it into a file, which I've done right here. All right, now if we start from the top, work our way down, uh, we can give our, the, uh, the location that we want to use. I'll use East US for myself. You'll put in your subscription ID, the resource name or resource group name that you'd like to add for, uh, for, for this resource group to be provisioned and the objects to be provisioned into, the VNet name, a subnet name, a NSG name, and then of course the network settings resource name. This could be anything. This holds, uh, essentially holds all the information about your network that you're gonna be provisioning and handing over to GitHub. So this could be anything. I'm gonna call mine like Red Hat, just Red Hat. I'm gonna be calling mine like Red Cloud dash uh, network dash settings, something like that. And of course, here's where your database ID goes. Now pay attention to this section. Right now, if you already have this CIDR range, this network range within your subscription, you're not going to be able to repurpose this network prefix. All right, you're going to have to change that. Now, in my instance, my I have a resource group already using these ranges, these default ranges. So I need to change it when I run the script, which I've done here. So I'm on a 10.11 instead of a 10.0. All right, so I've got. I have to update those. So pay attention to this. Don't blindly go through and uh, just accept all the defaults here. Make sure you, you check this out. All right, the next thing is to uh, log into Azure and set your su subscription. I don't need to do that because I've already logged in on this machine. So I'm just gonna comment that out. All right, and then uh, we wanna register the GitHub network provider. And this is the provider that we'll, uh, we'll delegate later so that GitHub can actually provision those NICs within our subnet slash VNet. And then we'll create the resource group in the location. We'll create the NSG and the NSG rules right here. All right. And this is where we're using that bicep file, right? So make sure that the naming is the same. All right. So we're going to use that bicep file to load those NSG rules. And then uh, we'll create the VNet and subnet and then assign that delegation to that VNet and assign the NSG as well to the VNet. The next step is actually going to output a very long GitHub ID. We'll also have that resource name that you've allocated up here associated to it. So it'll be a long GitHub ID number that we'll copy and transfer to the GitHub side for provisioning, but it'll also have that name like red cloud dash network settings in my case. All right. And that'll output everything. There's also a little portion here that when you get done with it, you can see this is all echoed out. Uh, that you can just run this to delete the uh, resource group. However, I've noticed from building this and kind of testing it, building it, tearing it down, building it, tearing it down, I, there are some unclean issues with that. So in my script, which will be available on uh, my GitHub link, you'll see where I'm actually running this command first, which is gonna be removing that resource, right? That network resource name. We're gonna remove that 
And by doing so, it'll help unblock the SIA, the security uh, controls. And then you can go in and remove the resource group and all the objects contained therein. All right, so definitely check this out. If you get it hung up and you don't do this step and you run into this, and uh, you run the script rather, and it comes to a point where like, the NSG isn't dropping or the VNet isn't dropping, it's one of the two, uh, then come over here and just run this script and this will again, remove that resource. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and continue to remove the objects, right? The, uh, the NSG or the VNet or the resource group after that, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and run through that. We'll build all, all those uh, objects and then uh, we'll be able to provision everything on the GitHub side. Okay, so I went ahead and added all the uh, export items, the environment items, and we'll run the script now. So it's sh vnet. And this will take a few seconds to build everything. Uh, once that's done, I'll be right back. Okay, it only took a few minutes and now you can see this really long GitHub ID. This is what I was talking about, right? So this is the number we're gonna use uh, when we provision the GitHub side. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy that real quick. And then if we just Briefly take a look at our resources on Azure. If I refresh this, we should get the other resource group right there. Let's go ahead and enter that. And I know that, you know, it still takes a few seconds, even though it's here, it still takes a few seconds for things to be built on Azure. Uh, but we're gonna start to build that peering relationship between this VNet and the other VNet. So, all right, so I'm, I'm gonna do that. And the first time I went through this on a previous, uh, test of myself it gave me an error the first time and then I just gave it a few seconds and did it again and everything works so that may happen I'm not sure uh, so we'll do github peer and then I'll call this one uh, red cloud peer all right and so allow the actions to be passed through the peer net vnet yes allow actions to receive forwarded traffic yes so they can return uh, or access that runner allow the allow gateway or route server in this network there isn't one but we need to enable it in the other network right the uh there's a peering for the v for the vpn in this other uh in this other network all right so yeah so we want to allow this one to access the remote peering all right so classic is fine uh subscription it's fine i want to go to the azure uh vpn vnet allow the vnet yes uh, and then we're gonna do allow for the traffic and allow gateway access. So allow gateway in this one to communicate with that one. All right, so that should be that should be it. We'll add that. That was successful, great. Okay, we'll see it's updating. I should get it connected. There we go. All right, so we're connected. All right, looks like the peer's up though. So let's move forward. All right, now we gotta configure the GitHub side. So we'll come over here, go to settings, and then down here, look for hosted compute networking, new network configuration, and then Azure private network. Give it a name, I'll say Azure private. Add the virtual network. And this is where we put in that long alphanumeric key. And when you click off of it, I'm just gonna click right here, it'll populate this field for us like that. You see everything is valid. And then we'll add our virtual network. Now we've added the configuration, but we actually haven't installed it. So make sure you hit create configuration. Now it's installed. And the next step is to create the runner group. So let's create the runner group. New runner group. So now we create a runner group, give it a name, say Azure VNet. And then you can select individual organizations. I'm just going to say all orgs. Uh, all workflows is fine. Here's where we pick our network configuration and we want that Azure private and then create the group. Now if the group's done, we need to associate or build the runners for this group. So I'm gonna to go to runners, new runner, pay as you go runner, uses the larger hosted runners, and we'll say Azure Linux runner. And so it's gonna be a Linux runner, click save, uh, Ubuntu latest, save, size, four cores, fine, save, 50 is fine. Permissions uh, for the runner group, we wanna select that Azure VNet, all right? And once that's done, again, because this is what I called it, all right, so that's Azure VNet, create the runner, and now we have our runners up and ready. All right, so let's jump into our organization. Here we go, and I've already got this uh, repo that we're gonna test in, but first, and often forgotten, even by myself, we need to enable 
the runners to have access to our repositories. All we've done so far is we've given the enterprise runners and the runner group uh, access to the organizations so the orgs themselves can control how those runners are used. So let's go to settings, we'll go to actions here, runner groups, and we'll see the runner group, but now we need to enable it to use our repos because you see zero repos are currently allowed to use it. And I'm gonna say all repositories. And yeah, once you set that, it just takes a sec. I scrolled down, but it refreshed right away. All right, so a runner group's been uh, updated. All right, so we're good to go there. Okay, so back over here, we can take a look at our sanctuary repository and go to actions. Under actions, I've already got this little workflow here. Let's select curl and then we'll edit the YAML file. And if we go down here, we'll see it's just a simple curl to httpsgoogle.com. Right, so this is the Azure Linux runner. This is our VNet runner. It also does this checkout, and this will verify that we're communicating with, uh, with GitHub, right? Because it needs to be able to pull or read this data in order to do the checkout. So we're verifying access to GitHub. And the second thing, we're verifying that it's denying traffic through that NSG. If you remember that first rule says that we're denying access to the internet. So this curl will fail. All right, let's go ahead and we'll run that. Uh, let me go back to actions so I could do workflow deploy and we'll run it. Okay, it looks like we got a runner assigned and we did get our checkout. So we are able to talk to, uh, to GitHub, but you'll see that this runner is actually failing to communicate uh, to google.com, right? That's exactly what we expect. Okay, I'm gonna cancel that and then we'll come back to actions. Let's go back to this YAML file here and we'll modify it. And what we'll do is we'll say curl 172.16.1.9 and this should access our, uh, this should ac access our VPN going across that peer link. All right, let's commit that. Again, what we're looking for is it to just curl, build a runner and curl our lab web server. There the runner's up. Curl our lab rub center from the VPN. There we go. So curl was successful. We'll see it was able to curl RedCop. So what does this show us? This shows us a couple of things. First of all, it shows us that these GitHub hosted runners are network restricted by the NSG rules. We were not able to get to the internet when we tried to curl Google. We also were able to show that we were able to access our VPN and curl the web server over there through that peer link, but we were also still able to, in both cases, uh, access GitHub to pull down those actions that we were needing to run. In this case, just the checkout action, right? Let's quickly review what we've done here. I've got a VPN connection with Azure and we've built a Azure VNet injected environment for the GitHub hosted runner. So the VMs come up, we've uh, designated or delegated uh, control of the NIC placement of those runners into our VNet. Our VNet has security rules enforced by the NSG. Those uh, NSG rules, we proved they were being enforced because we couldn't curl Google, but we also have this peering relationship now between these VNets so that we can securely route traffic destined for our VPN through our VNet gateway on this side, right? So traffic from the GitHub hosted runner passes through the security rules through the VNet into our VNet where it's being forwarded down to our VPN and returning. Gives us a secure private way to access on-prem or other cloud provided resources and still providing the security we need for our GitHub hosted runners. Again, thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Like, subscribe, share. Until next time.